Yep, so I've given him a little bit of tranquilizer. I gave him 0.2 Dormosedan and 0.2 Torbjizik. He's a very sensitive horse to tranquilizers. So, but when I start working below the hock or the knee, this is for me. Uh, while I know that there are times I've been able to treat horses without tranquilizing below the hock or the knee, we're going to make this easy. So I did that. And now I'm going to demonstrate how I treat the hock and high suspensory uh, area in the, hor in, in the horse. It's, um, this is an area that I consider to be extremely significant. Um, and this particular therapy is ex extremely effective in managing horses that are a bit sore in this area. It also is a very helpful aid in managing an, an, an actual injury to the area where you can diagnose um, a, a lesion on ultrasound. But a lot of times performance horses get sore in this area, but they're not injured. And this therapy helps manage what I call um, chronic manageable suspensory issues and chronic hock issues. So the insertion of the high suspensory, you access it through the medial aspect just below the uh, chestnut here and we go in this direction. We're treating an area that's approximately an inch and a half deep, which is 30 to 40, it's, it's 30 to 40 millimeters in depth. I'm gonna choose the 40 depth offset. Again, we moisten it. We have a little bit of leftover gel here from the previous treatment. I'm gonna to top it off just with a little bit, tiny little drop, that's all you need. Get a nice film. You don't want any coming around the edge of this because that's gonna make this locking part not work very well. Again, we check it to make sure none of the gel's coming out and we have a good seal. So we have really good contact. So once again, even though he's tranquilized, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the power to 10 and work back up. See the orientation? If I'm treating like this, I'm not gonna reach the insertion of the high suspensory. Okay. So again, this is a, to do a thorough treatment on this area, I use between 3,000 and 4,000 clicks. This particular area gets 1,500, and then I'll migrate down and do 1,500 to make 3,000, and then I'll put 1,000 right there at the middle joint of the hawk, okay? So one of the things I love about this is that you can treat a horse more frequently. How you charge for it is a personal opinion, but be aware that there are no operating costs, no running expenses when you use uh, the Wolf system because these probes, they effectively last forever if you don't drop them. I generally don't treat more than once a week, but on a horse that has a, a really sore back or issues rehabilitating from a suspensory um, injury, sometimes I'll go every week for a couple of weeks. Um, okay, so that's 1,500 clicks there. So now I'm going to migrate down. In this part of the suspensory, if you want to be completely thorough, you can treat from the, from the lateral aspect, but as you know, it's much easier to get behind the splint bone from the medial side than the lateral side. And shockwave therapy does not penetrate bone. It doesn't pass through bone. Okay, so that's 1,500. Now I'm gonna go um, to the middle joint of the hock. Actually, this one, um, I'm gonna switch the probes because I wanna be a bit more superficial. And I'm gonna grab the 20 millimeter. So this is just under a half an inch. Now this area can be sensitive. So I'm gonna dial back the power a little bit. Well, 
One of the misconceptions about shockwave therapy is you gotta have it cranked up as high as it can go for it to work. That's not true. So this counter, it's set up to stop every 4,000 clicks. That's just to help the administrator keep track. All you have to do is hit the trigger again and then um, it'll start again. So, okay, so now, just, just for reference point, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with this, but again, if I was concentrating on the lower joint of the hock, I would prepare this area again with the 20 millimeter offset. You're good. I would orient the probe in this way, just like you would orient your needle and I put 2,000 clicks there. Another access area to this particular joint where there's good contact, you can hit the front of the lower joints in this direction as well, and you can add clicks or split clicks up accordingly. So again, when you're treating the lower joint, you'd use the same landmarks you would that top of the head of the splint bone in the same direction you'd inject the needle. You'd put the probe 20 millimeters, and you'd hit it from two air angles, okay?